Njambi Koikai, commonly known as Njambi or Fire Mama, was an unstoppable force in Kenya's media. Her life sadly cut short in June of 2024, exemplified resilience, passion, and the unwavering spirit of a real warrior. This story follows this amazing woman's journey from humble origins to her climb to prominence as a register and a staunch advocate for women's health. Women have the power and women have the voices and our voices must be heard and we break the bias. Details regarding Jambi's early life are limited, although glimpses suggest a difficult background. My grandmother, Mary Jambi, came to pick my mom and I from the great Pumwani Maternity Hospital and took us home straight to an area known as Lovington Brown or Kawangware if you like, or as we know it, Ungwaru, and that became my home. Growing up with a single mother and a grandmother, financial hardships were a continuous reality. Nonetheless, her family instilled in her a strong sense of resilience and determination. I grew up seeing people calling my grandmother Mami. And so, Mami it was. And she refused to be called Grandma. She refused to be called Shosho. It was Mami. I was raised by Mami and my mother. Mami was an eclectic combination of Wamboyo Tieno, Rose Waruhio, Cardi B, and Madia. I was raised by my grandmother, my late mm. grandmother, who I was named after Mary Jambi, the late great, and I miss that woman every single day, Kathleen. I miss my grandmother so much. And every single step of the way, every move I'm making today, I yeah. see my grandmother. We used to call her Mami. Yeah. So I see Mami, and I'm like, I wish she was here today. You know? To see. Yeah, and she was, she was my number one Shelly. That she'd be like, go for it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> go Fire in your bones. Go. You know. Yeah. I raised you for this. Music became Jambi's shelter. Reggae, with its lively culture and teachings of empowerment, it spoke directly to her. She accepted the Rastafarian ideology of self-reliance and social justice which would influence her life. Her enthusiasm for reggae would pave the road for her future success later in her life. I want to say, is it ready? 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 Yeah, so easy, easy zangu, um, to me is just an expression of who Jambi is. For a long time, mm -hmm. I mini de Marigi. Come on, mini de Marigi, first of all. Reggae's cultural vibes in Kenya cannot at all be doubted. The throbbing beats and socially aware lyrics resonate strongly with the Kenyan soul. Actually, this is where Jambi discovered her voice. One very important component of her story is the difficulty of being a woman in a male dominated genre. Reggae, like many other genres of music, has traditionally been viewed as a man's world. However, Jambi refused to be bound by these expectations. Her commitment to spread her message exemplified her strength and passion. Jambi's journey became a source of hope and inspiration, particularly for aspiring female musicians and MCs in a male competitive business. And as he turned and walked away, he said, I'm still here in the house of exile for the love of the nation. Jambi's unmistakable skill drew the attention of Metro FM, one of Kenya's top radio stations. Landing a reggae show allowed her to reach a wider audience. Her infectious enthusiasm, extensive knowledge of reggae music, and real connection with listeners made her shows a must-listen. Jambi rose to prominence in the reggae industry, promoting both local and international performers. Aside from radio, she organized reggae events that highlighted the generous ability to unify and inspire. <laughs> Out comes the sun, shining on my face. Everybody say, ah, it's good. Even after a six-year sabbatical, she returned to Trace Radio in 2024. Her show, Trace Nadoba, aired from 8 p.m. to midnight on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, and focused on reggae, lovers' rock, dancehall, and reading.
little girl, she's 16 years old, straight from Jamaica. Oh, what a thing, oh, what a thing, oh, what a thing. Go find her. Yeah, man, she has a wicked tune, brand new tune on the solid as a rock rhythm. Oh, yo, it get your morals. I love when you wish that that plate up on around your nini. For your mama is emotionally intelligent. What a thing, she's strong, she bad. I don't know if you're ready for this yet. JQ, hey, I'm Dr. YouTube. Yeah, man. Read him Thursdays for your mama Jambi selector techniques. Let's go. Jambi enthusiasm for radio and enthusiastic hosting manner will without a doubt have an impact on the stations she worked for and her die hard fans. Hi, my name is Jambi Kwekai, a thoracic endometriosis team for survivor, and it's World Endometriosis Awareness Month. And I just want to encourage each of you out there to continue sharing your story, posting on social media about this disease that's affecting over 200 million women. Jambi's outstanding career was continuously overshadowed by her ongoing battle with endometriosis. Endometriosis is a condition in which tissue similar to the uterine lining develops outside the uterus. It can cause significant pelvic pain and make it difficult to become pregnant. Endometriosis can begin with a person's first menstrual period and continue until menopause. The extreme pain and complication induced by the disease forced her to take several breaks from the spotlight. Stage 4 endometriosis, identified when she was young, had a physical and emotional impact. Undeterred Jambi became an outspoken campaigner for endometriosis awareness. She publicly shared her experience on social media, breaking down the stigma of the ailment and empowering other women facing similar issues. The endometri endometrium lesions yes. that are supposed to come out during menstruation don't come out. So yes. in essence, the, if, if you're a person who has these cells in your body, these cells end up bleeding inside. So you end up having what we call retrograde menstruation. So you're bleeding from inside. For 18 years, Jambi endured excruciating periods, a telltale sign of endometriosis. However, the true extent of her struggle became horrifyingly clear when at the age of 32 she suffered a collapsed lung during her menstrual cycle. In, in my case, they lodged themselves in my lungs. So, um, every month when I'm on my period, these cells also bleed into my lungs and they make my lungs collapse. This unusual complication led to the diagnosis of thoracic endometriosis, a condition where the endometrial tissue normally found in the uterus grows abnormally outside it, in this case affecting her lung. So this is what has been draining out of my lungs, and so this bottle was a bit too big for me to travel, and I'm leaving for Atlanta this week. Jambi's path towards effective treatment started with an experienced gynecologist in Kenya who discussed the challenging aspects of endometriosis. The shock of all shockers when Dr. Patel was like, you know, there's no doctor here who can treat you. I can't even dare touch you because we do not have skilled experts locally. However, to receive the specialized care her ailment required, she had to travel 8,000 miles to the United States of America. She met with endometriosis doctors in Georgia who gave her a more detailed diagnosis, stage 4 endometriosis, which affects not only the lungs but also the diaphragm, sigmoid colon, rectum, and appendix. gonna make like a highlight video for you, it looks like. You're gonna show off. Yeah, I'm walking. <laughs> 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 Things people take for granted, right? I know, right? That's true. Jambi's fight against endometriosis was far from easy. Initially, she was expecting a short stay in the US. However, she found herself facing a much longer and a more complex battle. The surgery itself presented challenges as her right lung kept collapsing. This, along with other complications like heart and dental issues, necessitated close monitoring and a grueling recovery process. Jambi described feeling drained, pumped with medication, and physically depleted. And it's 
stayed under observation in the States for a year and a half. Because um, within that year, I also relapsed again. I also got another collapse. I went through another surgery. And six months before we came back home, I, they also discovered some more pockets of air and water. And so I had to go through another surgery. And that was the worst of them all. Despite the enormous physical mental toll, Njambi never gave up hope. Her faith, together with the continuous support of her family, particularly her mother and sister, served as her rock. She concentrated on remaining positive, putting bad thoughts away and believing that she would survive in this ordeal. <laughs> The cost of specialized therapy abroad posed a substantial barrier, and therefore, Jambi initiated an online fundraising drive, demonstrating the power of a community. The outpouring generosity from friends, family, and even strangers all over Kenya and the world enabled her to get the medical care she so needed. We have one point, no, actually one million to go, and I'm kindly asking for your help so we can make this happen. It's going to be history, it's going to be groundbreaking. Jambi's fight with endometriosis went beyond her own health. She explained how the condition affected several elements of her life. Chronic pain and unpredictable health difficulties resulted in broken friendships, damaged relationships, and even career setbacks. She even mentioned losing several organs owing to the severity of the disease. So what happens is I have to go in for surgery every month to uh, get out the water, the blood, and the air. So we've done 10 surgeries already. Okay. And but my doctor, my, my, my very able doctor, Dr. Odula, told me that, you know, we can't keep on doing the surgeries anymore, Kanyambia. We have to look for a specialist to remove the cells because I'm also at risk of scarring my lungs and getting infections. These events, she explained, pushed her towards a career in politics and vie for the Dagoretti South parliamentary seat in the August 2022 general elections. Jambi noticed a need for improved health care access, support systems for women with chronic illnesses and a platform to advocate for the voiceless. I would like to let the people of Dagoretti South know mm. that we have a moment in time to be the change we want to see. And we have a moment in time to take the chance to be the change we want to see. I mean, so many times we've been presented with candidates um, and aspirants who speak of change, but they never deliver. Njambi used her platform to raise awareness about women's health issues, particularly endometriosis. She encouraged open conversation around this condition, destigmatizing it and pushing for improved healthcare access for women in Kenya. This landed Jambi an ambassadorial job by Governor Natembea in Transoia County as Transoia Health Awareness Ambassador. In this role, she spearheaded creating awareness about endometriosis across the county enhancing healthcare information access and services. This advocacy made her a role model for young women and a champion for their well-being. And a privilege to be invited to your office in the Shukuru Summit and I look forward to raising awareness on endometriosis so that we can be able to save the lives of young people who are battling in silence. In the Shukuru Summit, Sana, Sana, Sana. Yes, in the Shukuru Sana, Kuru Kajala. On 31st of May 2024, Njambi sadly shared a post appealing for help after being admitted in Nairobi Hospital for an undisclosed illness. Njambi, on her Instagram stories, revealed the need for blood donation and appealed to anyone who could help her. Hey, mambo vipu kweri ya gani? Nairobi Hospital. Sikuwa papa ya niya. Okay. Kuna indaji na Njambi? Ah, me, alikuwa HDU, alikuwa HDU, alikuwa ICU. Why? Uh, uh, any yeah. official information go in Ghana situation in Ghana health care. Uh, uh, damu kila kitu ilifika poa watu wa support city. Mhm. Mm Shida ni uko very critical condition. Mhm. So they do maombi tu yani ya kuepoa. Sadly, on 4th of June 2024, news of Njambi's passing sent shockwaves through Kenya and the reggae community worldwide. Tributes poured in from fellow media personalities musicians and fans 
all acknowledging her immense contribution and the void she left behind. Senator Gloria Oroba, a close friend, described her a fearless Njambi and a warrior who is gone. Njambi Koika's life may have been cut short, but her legacy will continue to resonate. She leaves behind a rich tapestry of achievements, a successful radio and TV career, a vibrant reggae legacy, and a powerful voice for women's health. <laughs> God has been good. <laughs> good to me. Oy, Jehovah, muturi moy, okay? More importantly, she leaves behind an enduring message of resilience in the face of adversity. Fire Mama stories will inspire us to find strength in our struggles, chase our passions with favor, and fight for a better tomorrow. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more captivating tales of the Nairobi Juice content. Until next time, stay curious, stay inspired, stay informed, and keep spreading love wherever you go. Thank you.